Member Sykes. Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 27th of November 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Please also note that photographs are being taken of the meeting as well. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to the Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. We ask all present to stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country, at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Please sit down. Welcome, members. Um, item five on the agenda tonight. Uh, there are no apologies or leave of absence this evening. Um, item six is the confirmation of minutes for the 23rd of October, 2018. Councillors, could I have a mover and a seconder for a motion to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 23rd? Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, as read and be confirmed as an accurate record of proceedings. Uh, could I have a seconder? Councillor Albiad. Are there any corrections to the minutes? There being no corrections, I ask you now to vote in favour of the motion to confirm the minutes. Those in favour, please indicate by show of hands. Those against, that is carried. Item seven on tonight's agenda is public forums and deputations. We have one a person, Dr. David Faber, has registered to be heard in relation to the Gallipoli Memorial Wattle Grove. Dr. Faber, could you please come forward and address the council? Uh, you have up to five minutes. May it please the Council, I'm a historian resident in the southwest of the city and an adjunct research fellow at Flinders University. The Dardanelle Cenotaph has been removed from Park 21 West. It stood there in two different locations for 103 years. The question now is, what is to be done to provide an historical focus for that park and the community of the southwest of the city to replace that lost as a place of resort, reflection and heritage tourism. The Cenotaph originally stood to the west of St Louis Cohen Drive amidst a symbolic garden designed, like the Cenotaph itself, by master builder Walter Perrault. 
25 species of wattle were planted in four quadrants to recall the Anzac landing on the 25th of April 1915. The species were selected so that there would be wattle in bloom all year round to signify perpetual memory of those who fell. The plans of this beautiful design are held in the city archives. The Gallipoli Memorial Wattle Grove has continued to be marked on street directories of the city to this day. Tarot acted for the Wattle Day League, a ladies auxiliary of the Australian Natives Association. On the 24th of August 1915, the town clerk wrote to the city gardener, detailing the division of labour and costs as between the League and the City Council. In that letter, the town clerk noted, the corporation is to supply the wattle trees and to attend to the maintenance of the grove when completed. This undertaking was not effectively honoured down the years, and only a remnant stand of wattle and some other features mark the spot. This sacred grove should be restored as an appropriate development of Park 21 West and as compensation to the southwest city community for the loss of the cenotaph. But such a restored grove would need what it formerly had, a monumental focal point of human scale. At present, there is no monument to the armistice of 11 November 1918 in the city. What better way to commemorate the peace for which the Anzacs fought than to design and erect a modern monument as the centrepiece of a restored grove of flowering wattle. It would be good if the plan were realised after all stakeholders, including historians and the communities of the South West City and Unley, hitherto overlooked for years, were included in the necessary consultations. The incoming council, under Mayor Vershaw's leadership, is in an excellent position to turn over a new leaf on this matter, which has caused unnecessary angst for the community. What is needed is a positive resolution in keeping with some sound principles of heritage management and civic democracy. Thank you, Dr. Faber. Thank you for your deputation. Council, item eight on the agenda is petitions. There are no petitions to receive this evening. Item nine, advice from the Adelaide Parklands Authority and reports from other committee. Uh, Council item 9.1 presents the advice and recommendation of a special meeting of the audit committee held on the 26th of October, 2018. Um, the audit committee is required to present a report to council after each meeting. The report is presented to note the report of the audit committee and recommends approval for the city of Adelaide's two years internal audit plan. Uh, I have a councillor, Councillor Martin, uh, to move. Could I have a seconder, Councillor Moran? Moving Does... as printed. Thank you. Um, did you wish to speak? No, I don't no. Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? Uh, councillor, do you wish to sum up? Sum up. There being no further questions or debate, and I'll ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour, please indicate by show of hands. Thank you. Uh, those against, please indicate by show of hands. That motion is carried. Um, item 10 is the Lord Mayor's report. I don't have a verbal report for this meeting, um, which takes us to item 11. Uh, there are no written reports, but I do believe there's a report from the floor. Councillor Martin. Yes, just a brief verbal report, uh, Lord Mayor. I attended, uh, as an observer, a meeting of the Adelaide Airports Consultative Committee on the 16th of November, um, where there were the usual reports. And as I uh, often mention, uh, the aircraft breaches uh, 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 of the curfew um, residents of North Adelaide were subjected to 1,077 aircraft movements during the period when there are none between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. the next morning. But the matter which I wish to draw to the attention of the elected body is a study which was presented to the Consultative Committee um, uh, from a review by the West Torrens uh, Council of its development plan in the context of there being a transition from local development plans to state plans uh, under the changes introduced by the previous government uh, and adopted by the current government. Um, it was determined by the council that there were particular issues which ought to be 
uh, incorporated into any state planning changes. One of them related to aircraft noise. Uh, in much the same way as residents of North Adelaide are subjected to unwanted aircraft noise, residents of the city of West Torrance uh, endure sometimes even greater levels of aircraft noise. It was the decision of council that it would uh, poll residents, and so it sent a survey to more than 12,000 uh, residents and property owners to canvas their views about aircraft noise and aircraft attenuation measures. This resulted in a substantial document which West Torrance Council will submit to the state uh, uh, government and to the state planning commission for consideration of noise attenuation measures being included in the relevant state legislation. Uh, and I draw it to, to the uh, panel's attention merely uh, to suggest that this may well be something that the city of Adelaide should and could consider for the, uh, the residents of the city. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, do any other councillors have verbal reports they'd like to speak? Thank you. <coughs> now, item number six. Thank you. Sorry, I need a motion movement seconded. Seconded. Councillor Abia. Seconded. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thank you. Um, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So, all in favour of that being accepted? Those against? <laughs> Uh, thank you, that is carried. Item 12, uh, reports for, for council. <coughs> oh, sorry, okay. Um, Councillors, we've got six reports this evening. The first is item 12.1, sustainable event guidelines. Uh, this report is presented to approve the, the guidelines. Could I have a councillor move? Councillor Moran and a seconder for the motion, Councillor Sims. Um, councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to the motion? No, I didn't. Councillor Sims? Oh, okay. uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Kerrer. Uh, I seek to amend the motion, Lord Mayor. Um, do I, oh, sorry, uh, do I... Uh, do I, do I require a second for that? To speak, tell us what the amendment is, please. Sorry? Uh, you need to tell us what the amendment oh, is. Oh, okay, so I'll speak to the amendment. Um, I, um, I move that the motion be amended to read uh, that council refer the draft sustainable event guidelines as shown in attachment A to item 12 on the agenda for the meeting of the council held on 27 November 2018, a workshop for further investigation and discussion. Lord Mayor, I'd like to remove my um, original motion. I'm happy with the amendment. Lord Mayor, I'm we, could, um, we could vary. I'm happy to vary it to incorporate that. I'd like to withdraw my second in I'm not happy with that. So um, if the, so we need to start again with that. With that. So we actually have uh, an amended motion, um, which is on the no, screen. I will move my motion now, so it's Jesse's motion. Correct. So we have amended motion. So I have to yep. ask for a, a seconder for the amended motion. So uh, Councillor Moran. So uh, Councillor Carroll, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thanks Lord Mayor. Um, overall, the uh, objectives of these guidelines, uh, I believe, are laudable. Um, and it's a testament to the amount of work that's gone into them. However, uh, there are elements present that, uh, that I believe warrant the input of a new council, uh, given the potential impacts on small businesses. Uh, for example, uh, guideline 3.1, if adopted, uh, mandates, uh, makes compulsory that every piece of equipment used by a storeholder is Energy Star or Energy Rating labelled. Uh, so, for example, a uh, cooktop must be energy label or it's potentially banned. Um, so any storeholder who uses a cooktop which is not labelled uh, must either sell it, dispose of it or purchase a new one. Uh, events like Fork in the Road, the Fringe, etc. Uh, involve dozens and dozens of storeholders who use cooktops. Um, another example, uh, provision 1.6, storeholder agreements, which uh, potentially effectively bans balloons. Um, 
This may provide the media with a field day, uh, as they describe us as the Grinches who ban balloons. Um, a final example, provision 3.5, uh, which requires uh, event space operators and contractors to provide real-time energy monitoring. Um, what does this mean? What does it cost? And to what end is it presented? Um, these are just a few examples of provisions with effects that uh, a new council would, I believe, want to explore. And I submit to council that uh, a workshop would be the appropriate direction for this. Thank you. Councillor Ryan, did you wish to speak? Councillors, Councillor Sinsing. Thanks, Lord Mayor. It's nice to be back um, and to have an opportunity to talk about a green issue at the first council meeting. Look, um, I don't uh, support this amendment. I urge councillors to support the uh, original recommendation, and that is that we approve the uh, draft event guidelines. These are simply guidelines. They're not mandatory directions. There is a debate to be had about how we do ensure that there is enforcement of these kind of guidelines. My personal view is that Council could do more in that space in terms of encouraging enforcement, and that's something I'd like to look at in the new year. But these are simply guidelines, and they're an opportunity for this Council to set best practice when it comes to sustainability. As it says in the report, we do have I think, a terrific reputation when it comes to festivals here in our capital city. And we're developing a terrific reputation when it comes to greening and sustainability. And uh, I would hate to see the first decision this council makes being to kick this along down the road and have another workshop and some analysis paralysis. The work has been done. Let's actually lock it in and then have a discussion in the new year about how we can improve uh, implementation. But with respect to, to Councillor Kira, I think to go down this path would be an opportunity wasted and would set the wrong tone for uh, the first meeting of this council. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Donovan? All points covered, thanks. Councillor Moran. Uh, look, I disagree with the previous speaker. Um, it doesn't matter how much you support this, and um, we may or may not support all of it. I certainly don't. Uh, I certainly agree with uh, Councillor Kerr about the balloons. Um, uh, I think this council, when when Councillor Sim says another briefing, another workshop, this council hasn't had any briefings or any workshops. I've had them, and Phil's had them, and Hassan's had them, but the rest of you haven't. And the devil's in the detail. And don't be fooled by the, oh, this is just guidelines, this is just aspirational. Smart moves were guidelines and aspirational. And I'm suddenly having smart move thrown at me in planning assessment panels as a rigid set of rules that even the planning panel must abide by. So I think this is a worthy, laudable um, uh, plan, but you have to have ownership. If, if you rush into it now, in six months' time, councillors that are new to the council say, well, hang on, I, I didn't really read it that carefully or I didn't realise that it had that repercussion or it would lead to that sort of um, outcome because I really wasn't part of doing the plan. So you can't have an excuse like that if we sit down and we workshop it and go through it properly. The, if these things indeed are just aspirational guidelines, they can wait a few months or a few weeks for us to sit down, go through it. After all, um, truly green, um, passionate green people like I think Helen and uh, Rob are, you may want to add more to it. It may not go as far as you want in some areas. Um, it may go too far in other areas. But you have to have ownership of these documents that you put out. They're not going out in the name of the last council, they're going out in your name. So I think at least you should sit down with your colleagues and your peers and put your mark on it and put your stamp of approval. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Donovan. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I think I agree wholeheartedly uh, with Councillor Sims and I think the potentially the misunderstanding may be around the fact that it is guidelines and within those guidelines, it does refer to some things being mandatory. However, it's still simply a guideline for the event to adopt. 
And if they choose, then that would then make it mandatory to, for example, adopt some of those recommendations that have been suggested within the guidelines. So I think I've read through it. I've had a chance to chat to administration about it. I think it's an absolutely fantastic document that has been very well researched. There's been extensive consultation. So I, I wholeheartedly support us moving forward with this, with the understanding that, in fact, this is simply an, an, a framework for those uh, events that would so choose to adopt, to give a nice, easy little strategy that also comes with a series of very practical support, such as supply chain recommendations, if they should choose to adopt those uh, supply chain options around, for example, compostable packaging. So I think it's a fantastic initiative. I think it's been very well researched and put together, including extensive industry uh, consultation, which is what makes it practical and ready to roll out. And if anything, you know, in my opinion, in the future, it could be continued to be strengthened um, to move toward those goals that I think we all have in terms of sustainability. So I wholeheartedly uh, support the original motion. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. And I'll just um, remind you, you did accidentally actually talk just before, and that's uh, my fault for coming back to you twice. Normally we only get to speak once. <laughs> Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, when it comes to this, <clears throat> pardon me, it's not the what so much as it is the how. Um, Councillor Sims referred to the work already having been done. Councillor Donovan just said extensive industry consultation. Looking at the consultation that's happened to date, I um, do take issue with uh, the extent of that consultation. So we're looking at visits to the USA website, 47, whether they're unique visitations or not, we do not know. Downloaded information from the website, 37, again, unique, not sure. Completed submissions, six. Um, and uh, phone consultations successfully conducted for, so that's a chat on the phone, and an, in, an additional consultation was conducted via an incidental conversation with Festivals Adelaide. So someone bumped into someone um, at the shops or something. So I'm just not sure the work has been done when it comes to the consultation on this. And when we're talking about 800 plus events that are run in the city every year, um, uh, with what looks to be over $290 million in um, in value that gets added to the city, uh, city's economy and gross domestic product. Um, I just don't think uh, I just don't think the work has been done, which is why I'm talking, um, why I'm opposing this motion. Um, moreover, would I be able to ask a question of admin on this issue? Um, so my question would be, um, when we're looking at the costs, uh, we see in the 2018-19 financial year there was about $153,000 in cost um, uh, because of this. I'm just curious. Um, what did that cost come from and was the work done inside council or was were outside consultants used and to what extent? Thank you. CEO. Michelle, please. Um, through the Lord Mayor. Um, so uh, that cost this year included, so it was part of the integrated business plan for this year. Uh, it included um, an FTE, um, specifically working on this project within council, and we also um, had sustainability consultants uh, involved uh, in the running of the two workshops that we had throughout the year in, in December last year and then um, uh, in the middle of this year as well. Does that answer your question? Are there any other speakers to this motion? Councillor Albia? I just had a couple of questions first and then uh, I may speak to this if that's okay with me. So the uh, first question relates to guidelines versus policy. Um, just as has been sp spoken before, some of our guidelines do translate to policy sometimes within administration and that's fine. Uh, some, to some degree that's okay. I guess what I'm trying to ascertain here from an implementation perspective of those guidelines, what are we expecting uh, to have people that are applying for those guidelines uh, start to comply with those guidelines? When's the expectation of that occurring, if this was approved tonight? Um, through the Lord Mayor. So the guidelines have been developed in consultation with industry through those two workshops. So we have leading industry organisations like Woy Adelaide who are already doing this type of work. 
Uh, what we've heard from industry is they actually want to move together and they want these actions so that they can do that and have a, a common um, point of view. Uh, the, um, the guidelines would, if council endorse them tonight, or whenever they might endorse them, would become voluntary guidelines, which we would then provide to event um, organisers or managers, put on our website. Um, but the really important part is um, actually implementation of those guidelines. So actually working with industry to see how we can support them through a staged approach over time, which works for the industry. Um, we are also applying them already to our own events. So our awards tomorrow, New Year's Eve, so that we can feed back what we've learned um, to industry as well. So it's, it's a collaborative journey. <laughs> Still not quite sure on the date. I'm aware that some organisations are already doing that because they're capable of doing it. Uh, for the ones that can't, that are applying through for events permits in our parklands, when when is the cutoff date at which they have to start uh, taking on board our guidelines? Is it immediately after this council meeting? Um, no, through the Lord Mayor, they are, they are voluntary guidelines. Okay. Um, the only mandatory um, element we have around sustainability is in relation to uh, a motion that was passed earlier this year and council decided to ban um, plastic straws in events. I, I guess the reason I'm asking is to determine as the time if there's a window of opportunity for some of the members that are unsure about supporting this or not, if there is time for them to do that. Um, if they're going to be implemented next February, or that's when they're going to be advertised on the website, then there's an opportunity for members to take it to a workshop and then do that. If there isn't, then that's a separate process. And I may have an amendment to this that may achieve that outcome. But the question is, <laughs> hopefully for the last time, when do you think they'll be implemented, or at least given to people as guidelines to use? Is it immediately after this council? Through you, Lord Mayor. Paragraph 8 does discuss that of the report and pretty much as was described, the, the draft guidelines would be made guidelines and would be applicable from here on in for those entities that could use it. I was just considering whether it may be that implementation could be something of a further conversation at okay. a workshop rather than the guidelines themselves. So that's my thoughts, Leo. And with that in mind, I may move an amendment uh, if the Lord Mayor is amenable to it and uh, if I do get a second uh, and the amendment would read that council, the first line remains the same, so approves the draft sustainable events guideline as shown. So the, the initial uh, motion, or initial recommendation, apologies. And then the second part of the motion would read that council requests a workshop to be held at the next possible committee to brief and obtain direct feedback from elected members with regards to the implementation of the draft sustainable events guidelines. Thank you, Councillor. You might have to read that one more time. So the first part remains the same as the initial recommendation. Second part, request a workshop to be held at the next possible committee to brief and obtain direct feedback from elected members with regards to the implementation of the draft sustainable events guidelines. And I'll seek a seconder. Councillor Sims. I just have a question on that, Lord Mayor. If, um, if they become the, if, if they're adopted, the uh, guidelines are approved, I assume that should read the sustainable, the sustainable events guidelines. They're no longer draft. Is that correct? I'm just referring it as it's written, so I just don't want to yeah, change it. I'm having a second motion. Yeah, um, he can't. Councillor Sims, you can't. You've already seconded. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Councillor Martin. That is revolutionary. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Martin. <laughs> um, uh, look, just quickly in speaking um, in support of this, I think really this achieves the outcome of what councillors are trying to get through. The word that really resonated for me, uh, with me from the administration was uh, a real focus on this is a guideline. Uh, so this is a voluntary process where there's an opt-in style process versus a forced approach. Um, I think guidelines, as we've seen in the past, uh, provide the ability for administration and council to test some concepts in the market. And then those guidelines become policy. And I think what this council needs to make a decision on is what policy would it like to adopt 
for implementation in the future. And I think that's what Councillor Carra is really focused on with regards to how would this be implemented? How would it impact the business on the other end? And I agree, some businesses will find this very easy to take on board because they're already doing it, they've got the know-how, they potentially may have the funding, but some other businesses may find it difficult to achieve. And I think council's got to play a role in holding their hand and walking with them versus forcing them through the approach. Because as we can appreciate, it could be difficult for some businesses to implement this. So if the councillors have the opportunity through a workshop to make amendments to the draft submission if required, or if they have the opportunity to make a change towards how it would be implemented, uh, I think that workshop will provide an opportunity for everyone to have a say and be able to then, if necessary, on implementation and policy, bring anything back to council with relevant changes and potential more consultation can be done uh, after the workshop because I'm sure elected members will be able to go out, speak to event organisers, get their feedback and also feedback through the process on the workshop too. So um, I think I'm hoping this achieves the outcome that everyone has set out to do um, and I'd ask members to support this amendment. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Well, just very briefly, Lord Mayor, it's just such a pleasure to be able to second the motion put forward by Councillor Abbey at <laughs> um, the, the first of the evening, the first of the council, but Lord Mayor, the first of very, very many. I'm always going to come and hug you. It's such a delight to be back here, by the way, and may I say it's delightful to have Councillor Sims here too, and to be able to uh, have the lexicon back again about analysis, paralysis, and the many other sayings, it's, yes, it's delightful. Um, look, I, I don't understand what all the fuss is about. They are guidelines. They are simply guidelines. Uh, council has no authority to enforce most of the material in there. It relies on a collaborative approach with industry. However, if it is the feeling of the council that there should be a workshop, and this council has not had a workshop, I think this council deserves a workshop. And in fact, perhaps two or three uh, perhaps we could amend it, but uh, if there's to be further consideration, then I won't object to that. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, I'm a little confused at the motion. Um, the motion, as uh, often when Councillor Abbey had debates it, is quite different from the motion he's put. Um, <laughs> the motion that he's put is that we can roll, we can adjust the implementation of the draft guidelines. But the draft guidelines are set, but then you've said at the workshop we can change the draft guidelines. But that's not what your motion says, is it? If it is, I'm perfectly happy because I want to change the draft guidelines. Three, Lord Mayor, if I can just clarify it. As I, as I understand it, the intent is to adopt the draft guidelines here and now, to workshop the implementation, and through that, pro that discussion, if there are any um, changes that are considered necessary, to report back to Council to make those changes. Gu gu guidelines can be changed at any time by Council. Can you explain to me how that's different from um, uh, Council Carers then, which is just asking for a workshop to look, to, uh, look at the guidelines? With the implicit thing that he might, that the councils might want to change it, and we can always look at the thing. I think that the second amendment of the Psalms is um, is exactly the same in actual fact to the one that council. Could, 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 could they move and then explain the difference between the initial motion and his? Well, perhaps you could explain that. I'm happy for the administration to explain what they see the difference. I see no difference. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Abiyad, would you like to explain? Yes, that? very happy to explain that. We're talking about approving a draft, the, the actual sustainable events guideline today, as they are before us. That's what we're talking about. Then we're going to take this to a workshop, we're going to look at those, and we're going to work out how to implement those. If there was issues with the implementation, then there will be an opportunity for Council through the administration to make the necessary changes to the uh, to the events guideline as needed. So we have a very important role as a council on how we implement them. And the intent of this motion is to see to play a role in the implementation process, not in the guidelines process. I think the mistakes being made is the word implementation. When you implement something, you roll out an action, a list of thoughts and plans. That doesn't say that you change the thoughts and plans. You're just looking at the implementation. So I think this motion is being presented as Jesse Kiera's motion that we are we can change it, but you can't without a rescission motion. You, if you adopt these tonight and follow this uh, this motion, you have adopted them. You cannot change them at a workshop. You would need a rescission motion to do so. 
Uh, all this motion does is say you can say when it's rolled out, but it's going to be rolled out tomorrow. As they've said, the information, implementation will happen immediately. That the, this falls. So this is, with all due respect, not a reasonable motion. It's trying to compromise. You want the whole thing done and dusted. We want to have another look at it because I don't want to ban balloons. Um, so I'm urging you to make, take, be, be, be brave, either vote for it and set it in stone or say that we really are a new new council with only a very few people that have actually worked on this in this room and we would like to just go through it and check it before it's rolled out. Because as I said, these guidelines become mandated in actual fact. Uh, the businesses and events that try to get a license on our parklands that do not follow these guidelines in all likelihood will not get a license. They will be, will, have you got energy efficient hot plates? Have you, are you using balloons? Have you got compostable cups? No, I haven't. Sorry, no license. So I think to, to delay it for a few weeks, so you have a look and you're comfortable with it is serious. But this motion amendment does not give you the chance to change it. It just gives you the chance to implement. I don't even know what implement. It's going to be implemented tomorrow, as, as the uh, young woman in the front said. As soon as we vote on it, it's being implemented. So um, I think we go back to the original motion or the uh, and just vote against it if you don't if you want to do it. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims. Like uh, Councillor Martin, Lord Mayor, I also welcome the opportunity to be able to uh, support Councillor Abiad's motion. I do think this is a good compromise. I understand uh, um, Councillor Kira uh, has wanted to talk about how this is going to work in practice. Um, I uh, would also welcome the opportunity to talk about how we can work with the business sector to support them in meeting these guidelines. And so I think what uh, Councillor Abiad has put forward is a good compromise and um, I'd encourage this council to support it. What we're doing tonight, if I understand the motion correctly, is approving the guidelines as they are, but then we're having a discussion as a group about how we can implement those going forward. And uh, I think that's a good discussion for us to have, but let's not kick this down the road again, delay the guidelines when they've already been subject to extensive community consultation. Um, and I do want to take the opportunity to commend the work of the administration on this because it was clear to me looking through this that there's a lot of work that's got us to this point and uh, I don't want us to lose this momentum tonight. I don't want to be you know, reading in daily or the advertiser uh, tomorrow and seeing council squibs on an opportunity to lock in a yeah, sustainable event guidelines. Let's embrace the opportunity. It's our first meeting. Let's build on the momentum and then let's have a discussion in the new year about what we can do to implement it and build on this important work. But no more delays, now is the time for action. Are there any further speakers? Sorry. Uh, no. <coughs> Sorry, thanks Councillor Hart. Thank you Lord Mayor. Um, <clears throat> uh, just a quick point. Um, <clears throat> I think if we adopt them now, if we approve them now, um, and then we have a discussion and workshop around what we're actually going to do with them now that we've got them. It's sort of like a dog chasing a car that doesn't know what to do with it when it catches it. Um, and I think because of that, I think parts one and two of this motion as it's presented to us now as amended are actually repugnant to the ideas of good governance. So I'd just like to remind the chamber of that. Thank you. That's a good question. That's a good question. You can ask a question, Council Murray, Council Martin. Um, it's, look, it's a question of the administration. I understand the nature of the motion, that is that we will approve guidelines. If, however, there is a decision to not implement a guideline to all practical purposes, it means that that guideline has not been adopted. Is that correct? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Once Council approves these guidelines, they will be rolled out and as, as Michelle has explained, they'll be on a voluntary basis and we will work with those entities where possible to utilise them. Um, should Council at its workshop decide that they are problematic, we would then immediately report back to the next Met Council meeting and they would be able to be adjusted. Councillor Abraham Zanetti. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just wanted to uh, uh, clarify again, the CEO might need to repeat himself, but just wanted to make sure that um, the guidelines can be changed later on down the track. We do have the power to do that. CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. Yes, look, guidelines can be changed at any time by Council. Councillor Kerry. Uh, I'm just wondering whether I'm jumping the gun because do I get to sum up at some point on my amendment? No, Councillor Kerr, because the um, the motion. Right, once we're all finished. Just... <laughs> Does anybody else? Would anybody else like to speak to this? No, if, to the amendment. No. So now we're voting on the amendment. This... Now we're going to ask Councillor Aviad to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, thank you, councillors. Uh, look, the concern that every member has in this chamber is how will this be implemented? That's the concern. Guidelines can sit on the shelf, can sit online, can sit on the web. If they're not implemented, they're not worth anything whatsoever. And the feedback we need to provide as a community conduit to the community is how will these guidelines be implemented? That's where we need to have a say, and we will have an opportunity to do that through a workshop. Like we've heard from the CEO, if we feel like any of those guidelines, which are going to be tested over the next 12 months, are not going to be fitting within the community's outcome, the economic outcome, our sustainability outcomes, then we do have an opportunity, like we heard from the CEO twice tonight, at any given time, to change those guidelines as required to suit the community's outcomes and needs. So with this in mind, it will give us the opportunity to test the implementation, Let's adopt something in the way of a guideline and see how we test it through a workshop. And we'll take it out to the community and we'll get feedback. Getting feedback by doing is the best possible approach because I tell you now, in my experience, the chamber never gets it perfect, nor does the administration. So having that feedback loop through a testing mechanism will give us the opportunity to keep modeling the guidelines and evolving the guidelines until we get them right for that time, for that community. Because as the community changes, as the time changes, the needs will change. And so does the guidelines. So I'd ask members to support this and we look forward to having a chat about it at the workshop. Thank you, Councillor Albion. Thank you. So now we're gonna vote on the amendment that's on this screen. Um, so if I could ask those that are in favour of the amendment to please raise their hand. Those who are against the amendment, please raise their hands. Division. That amendment is carried. This then becomes the substantive motion. <coughs> so all members who voted in favour, please rise. <coughs> Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Abiad, Councillor Ho, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Martin, Councillor Knoll, and Councillor Sims. I declare that is carried. That now becomes a substantive motion, and I'll ask Councillor Kerr to sum up. Is that correct? Thank you. Right, well, to sum up on the uh, original amendment, um, the, uh, a number of points have been raised in opposition to that, that amendment. May I remind the council the amendment is purely to uh, refer the guidelines to a workshop so the council can uh, discuss them before approval. Uh, it is not to say that the guidelines themselves are, um, are bad, that it is, you know, as I said, um, earlier, the guidelines themselves, the um, purpose of them are plainly laudable. Um, if we are going to discuss as a new council the implementation of the guidelines, would it hurt us so much to be able at the same time to discuss the guidelines themselves? Uh, particularly given the guidelines as they stand do present potential uh, substantial impacts to small business. Um, to the argument that those, these guidelines are not mandatory, well, the document says the draft guidelines are not mandatory. However, some actions could be incorporated as part of the uh, of new event license agreements and council sponsorship funding over time. So plainly, the, the, the guidelines intended to have some effect um, or they wouldn't be there to begin with. 
Um, the argument that Councillor Sims raises that we are kicking the can down the road, um, with great respect to Councillor Sims, this is a brand new council. We haven't looked at this can. We don't know what the can is. Um, it's not something we can kick down the road when we have not been able to discuss the, these guidelines in any in their substantive uh, quality to any extent. So um, I would just say, in summing up, that uh, it, you know it is not to take away from what Councillor Aviate is suggesting that we discuss the implementation in the workshop. Um, but when you have got guidelines there which ban balloons, and that is a plain reading of the guidelines that I mentioned earlier, uh, that balloons and, and advertising and publicity materials are effectively banned by contract with storeholders, um, it's something I think worthy of New Council to at least um, have some input where they think it's appropriate. Um, and one final thing, the, just on Councillor Hyde's point about the level of input, um, upon it, asking administration uh, to, about the extent of input, um, I was told the number of major groups have put input, but I was told that no event hold, uh, stall holders have had any input. No individual stall holder has had input into these guidelines. And given that they, they largely bear the brunt of the, a number of them, I think that just reminds us that it's probably worth the guidelines themselves uh, being discussed by Council. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. I'll now ask uh, councillors to vote on substantive motion. Those in favour? Which is what is on the screen. So that's the substantive motion now. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. <laughs> Councillors, that takes us to uh, item number 12.2, the results of the 2018 general election. This report is presented to ensure our communities are informed of the election outcome. Could I please have a councillor move and second motion tonight the results of the City of Adelaide 2018 council election? Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Uh, councillor Moran, did you want to speak to it? Uh, councillor Sims. Uh, would any other councillors wish to speak to this motion? No. Um, councillor, would you like to sum up? Summed up. There being no further debate, I'll ask you now to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? Councillors, item 12.3, acknowledgement of service. This report is presented to recognise and acknowledge the service provided by outgoing council members. Could I have a mover and seconder? Councillor Moran? I want to move um, the original motion, but with um, three more points. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Yes, please. Okay, um, after four, I've got a five. Refer the future provisions of the corporate facilities passed to a review of council standing orders to be undertaken in 2019. Six, request that the civic recognition the CEO working group provide advice to council on better ways uh, to also recognise former Lord Mayors and long serving council members. I'll look for a seconder. Sorry, I saw Councillor Albiard first. Councillor Moran, would you like to speak to that? Uh, I think that's self-explanatory. And um, Lord Mayor, um, as there has been some discussion, I would uh, <coughs> ask the request that the motion be put. If there's no. <coughs> so, as the seconder, did you? So you can move it so as a mover, you can't move a formal motion for the motion to be put. I have to form. Can somebody else move that it be put there? Yeah. So Councillor Martin, did you wish to move that it be put? That requires a seconder. Councillor Abraham Zedan. 
Okay, so when the motion is put, councillors, that means we go straight to the vote. So those in favour, and the motion as per the screen, those in favour, those against the motion. Councillor Hyde, did you vote? I'm in favour. Thank you. I'll call again. Those in favour, please raise your hands. Those against, that motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Okay, that now be <laughs> So that now becomes a substantive motion. Now we vote on the motion uh, as per the board. If I could ask those in favour. Thank you, councillors. Those against, that motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item 12.4, position of Deputy Lord Mayor. This report is presented to approve the appointment of a Deputy Lord Mayor in this term. Could I have a councillor move the motion? Sorry, the report before you contains a three-part recommendation to appoint to the position of Deputy Lord Mayor in this term, determine a one-year duration for the appointment, and then we'll seek nominations. So it's a procedural motion, first of all. Could I have a councillor move and second the motion? So Councillor Moran, Councillor Albiard. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Albiard? Are there any other councillors wish to speak? Oh, I keep turning it off. Councillor Brand, did you wish to sum up? Sum up. There being no further debate, I'll ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour, indicate by show of hands, please. Vote for the entire motion. Correct. For the entire motion, yes. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Uh, that is carried. Councillors, I'll now call for a nomination to the position of Deputy Lord Mayor for the period of the 27th of November 2018 until the 30th of November 2019. Can I call for nominations, please? Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. May I nominate uh, Councillor Abiyad? Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abiyad, do you accept that nomination? Yes, Lord Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? In the absence of any further nominations, I'll seek a motion to confirm the selection. I'll Cal take it to room. Thank you. May I declare a material conflict as a result? I have to exit the room. Okay, thank you. So, councillors, could I now have a motion to appoint Councillor Abiyad to the position of Deputy Lord Mayor from now until the 30th of November 2019? Councillor Hyde, could I have a seconder? Councillor Abraham Zeta. <laughs> um, would you like to speak to the motion? I'll just make some brief reflections um, uh, on Councillor Abia. They're all positive. Um, uh, just that he's uh, very experienced, and as we've seen with um, the amendment that he moved earlier today, he's um, very good at uh, bringing people together, at collaborating, um, and uh, landing in a middle ground that, uh, well, as as, I, as I've said a lot recently, often politics is about the least worst option. Um, we don't often deal with best case scenarios. It's always about the least worst option. Um, and despite the fact I disagreed with Councillor Abiyad just earlier, um, uh, I do think uh, I do think that uh, he had the best intentions of the city of mind when he um, when he moved it, um, as he always does. So I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abraham Zidane, would you like to speak? <laughs> I think Councillor Hyde summed up very well. Thank you. Uh, are there any other councillors like to speak to the nomination? I'd like to ask a question. What does the least worst mean? <laughs> <laughs> we, we might do that over dinner, Councillor Moran. Um, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? No? Councillor Hyde, do you wish to sum up? Thank you. There being no further debate, I'll now ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour, by a show of hands. Those against. 
that motion is carried. Congratulations, <laughs> Councillor Abiyad. You will be the Deputy Lord Mayor from now until the 30th of November 2019. I look forward to working with you, uh, Lord Mayor and all the Councillors. Thank you. Item 12.5, Standing Orders. Uh, Lapse to council decisions as a result of the 2018 general election. This report is presented to comply with the meeting regulations, which directs that any question that lies on the table as a result of a successful formal motion that now lapses as a result of the general election be reported to council for information. Can I have a councillor move the motion that council rece receives the report? Councillor Sims. Could I have a seconder? Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to the motion? No. Councillor Moran? No. Does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Uh, as the mover, Councillor Sims, would you like to sum up? Summed up. Summed up. There being no further debate, I'm debate and I ask you to move, vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Item 12.6, the CEO performance review panel, appointment of panel members. This report is presented to appoint uh, a CEO performance review panel for the 2018 to 2022 council term. The report for you contains a three part recommendation to establish the CEO performance panel, appoint the Lord Mayor and Deputy Lord Mayor to the panel and then seek nominations for two councillors to be appointed to the panel. So the first part is procedural and then we'll ask for nominations. Could I have a councillor please move the motion? Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abiyad, did you wish to speak to it? That's procedural. Councillor Hyde. There's no there's no conflict, material conflict of interest okay. because there's no remuneration, so yep. um, did anybody else want to speak to the motion other than the question from Councillor Martin? No, if not, uh, Councillor Abia, do you want to wish to sum up? Uh, no further debate. Could you now vote on the motion? Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Councillors, I now call for nominations for the selection of two councillors for appointments to the CEO performance panel. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? Right, uh, Councillor Abiyad. Um, I have two interests of Councillor Moran and Councillor Kerr. Um, if they would like to also um, consider, or if one of them would like to withdraw, but both, both of them express interest. So. I was going to say the same thing if Councillor Moran um, prefers to stand. Okay, so I'll um, nominate Councillor Kerr. Councillor Kerr, do you accept the nomination? I accept the nomination, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Are there any other nominations from the floor? In the absence of any further nominations, I'll seek to a motion to confirm the selection. Can I have a motion, please, to appoint Councillor Martin and Councillor Kerra to the CO Performance Panel for a period of two years? Councillor Hyde and Councillor uh, Seconder? I'm sorry, Councillor Ho? Um, did anybody want to speak to the motion? Oh, sorry, Councillor Hyde, would you like to speak to the motion? No, Councillor Hyde. Uh, could I, does anybody else want to speak to the motion? No. Um, who was the leader? Councillor Hyde, would you like to sum up? Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, lost track of all the names on my piece of paper. Um, 
There being no further debate, could I please ask you to vote on the motion? Um, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you, Councillor Kerra and Councillor Martin. So item number, oh, so there are no emerging key risks. Um, so it takes us to item number 13, uh, which are questions on notice. There are no questions on notice. Item 14, questions without notice. Uh, I believe there is a question without notice from Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Would you like me to read that question without yes, notice? Please. Um, speaking to the media yesterday, the Premier asserted that the Stadium Management Authority, the SMA proposed new hotel at Adelaide Oval, would not be constructed on parklands and by inference would remain part of the Adelaide Oval core area. Could the administration confirm that if the proposed development is entirely within the Adelaide Oval core, it would be captured by those provisions of the Adelaide Oval Redevelopment and Management 2011 Act, which would, one, preclude any obligation for the SMA or the State Government to consult with the Adelaide City Council or the community, two, allow approval of any development, including this hotel, by Ministerial and State Commission Assessment Panel approval alone. Uh, Councillor Martin, would you like me to read the response to the question or notice? Oh. <laughs> Councillor Martin, would you like the CEO to respond to the question? Oh, I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, through you, Lord Mayor, it's necessary to read the Adelaide Oval Redevelopment and Management Act 2011 in conjunction with the memorandum of lease which the Council was required to grant to the Minister. Um, the lease terms provide that the Minister must consult with Council prior to undertaking any development or constructing any works in the core area which, in the opinion of the Minister, would constitute a major redevelopment of the core area or substantially vary the built form on the core area or its use. For the purposes uh, of that consultation function, the Minister is required to provide the Council with a reasonable period in which to consider and comment on such proposal. Based upon this provision, it is considered necessary for there to be some level of consultation between Council and the Minister, as it would be difficult to argue that such a proposal would uh, not either constitute a major redevelopment uh, or not substantially vary the built form. Um, however, the Act or the lease do not require approval of Council. With regard to question two, um, uh, based on the assumption that the proposed development is contained within the Adelaide Oval Core area, then subject to the requirements set out in the Act and the lease, the Minister may use and may authorise the use of the core area in such manner in accordance with such arrangements as the Minister considers appropriate from time to time. For the proposed development, the State Commission Assessment Panel is expected to be the relevant planning authority. So in, in essence, I need to confirm that um, Council has no power to authorise nor disallow the development, it has no role to play. So it's, um, that's the answer we provide. Thank you, CEO. There's no debate or questions on it. Uh, no, I was just going to ask Lord Mayor if I could have a copy of that prepared written response. Yes, yes of course. Um, <coughs> Thank you. Uh, item 15, there are no motions on notice. Uh, takes us to item 16, which is motions without notice. Do any councillors have a motion without notice? No. In that case, we'll move on to item 17, which is the exclusion of the public. Councillors, there are four items presented with a request for consideration in confidence. Each item will require a motion and a decision to order the exclusion of public to enable consideration in confidence. Um, could I please have a mover and a seconder for a motion to order the exclusion 
of the public for item 18.1.1, which presents the report of the audit committee from its special meeting on the 26th of October 2018. Councillor Moran and a seconder, Councillor Abiyad. Um, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? No. Uh, Councillor Moran? Summed up. Um, there being no further debate, I ask you to vote on the motion, please. Indicate uh, in favour by a show of hands. Those against? That is carried. Uh, I now ask for a mover and a seconder for a motion to order the exclusion of the public for item 18.2.1, a report in relation to the Adelaide Southwest Community Centre lease. If I could have a mover, Councillor Canole and a seconder. Councillor Moran. Councillor Knoll, would you like to speak to the motion? No, Councillor Moran. No, are there any other speakers? No, Councillor Knoll, uh, would you like to sum up? Thank you, there being no further debate, we'll now vote on that motion. Those in favour? Show of hands, please. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that is carried. I now call for a mover and a second for the motion uh, to order the exclusion of the public for item 18.2.2, uh, a report in relation to a strategic lease matter. Um, Councillor Moran, could I have a seconder for that motion please? Councillor Hyde. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to that? No. Councillor Hyde, no. Any other speakers to that motion? Councillor Moran? Summed up. Um, please vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. I now require a mover and a second for the motion to order the exclusion of the public for item 18.2.3, a report presenting the Capital City Committee Annual Report 2017 to 2018. Uh, Councillor Moran, could I have a second, please? Councillor Donovan. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Donovan, Counts uh, any other speakers on this motion? No, Councillor Moran, summed up. Can you please vote? Are those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Mem
Well, that concludes the business of the meeting of councillors. I, can I have the doors unlocked and the meeting reopened to the public? One moment, one moment. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. There being no other items of business, I declare the meeting closed. Thank <laughs> you.